All right, so uh, in today's video, I'm going to be uh, answering the questions that you guys had for me yesterday and today. And, uh, you know, the questions that you guys uh, had for me, you know, a lot of them are the same. So, you know, I'm going to kind of, you know, say it once, let's kind of cover your questions. And so, you know, this video is going to be a little bit long uh, just because there's some good information and the good questions that you guys asked. Uh, so I'm going to be answering mainly seven questions. And the first one comes from a future sailor Galloway. And he asks for me to talk about the physical training and how much uh, running you should expect. So, uh, you know, running wise, there are mainly, you know, running outside the shuttle run and running in the gym and the uh, physical fitness assessment. So physical fitness assessment is obviously uh, the test. So the first three, there's three physical uh, physical fitness assessments. Uh, throughout your two months in boot camp and uh, you know your main objective is to pass uh, within a time limit that you are given uh, according to your age and if you don't know that uh, you know you can easily find it in Google and um, also you know you run outside so you know when you are let's say going to medical dental or you're going to you know legal somewhere you know whenever you're outside the ship so a ship is a building where you live in so whenever you're outside you're depending on the weather depending on how the ground is uh, they're going to want you to run so run to your destination they call it double time double time to your destination and double time back to your destination or uh, walk to your destination and double time back to your destination so uh, you know, depending on how much you go outside, depending on if you go to medical, depending on uh, if you're a swimmer. So if you can't swim and you are put into the uh, group of uh, swimmers that, where they have to learn how to swim, uh, you know, uh, if you're the one of the few that you're probably going to have to run a lot. And also, uh, there are days, uh, training days designated for uh, running specifically, uh, which is called shuttle runs. Um, but overall, I mean, the shuttle run, I'll go in more detail later on to answer another question. But overall, uh, there, are, there is not a lot of training and not a lot of time uh, to, to really help pick up your, your ability to run. Uh, so what I, you know, what I do recommend is, you know, when uh, partner, up your, partner yourself up with... Uh, people who can run, you know, people who are great at, great at running, uh, do a lot of cardio exercise when, you know, before you sleep or uh, whenever you have some free time. So I will also give you another tip to answer another question later on uh, in regards to running. So the second question comes from 1337 Dragon, uh, talking about, you know, holding your breath underwater. He asked, you know, is it for five minutes? But no, it's not for five minutes. Um, so what you are referring to is uh, specifically the prone float. Uh, the prone float, uh, which is one of the tests that you have to pass uh, in, in the swimming. And, you know, if you have never swam before and you're going to boot camp, uh, prone float is going to be, I, I would say, the second biggest obstacle uh, for you to overcome. The first biggest obstacle, uh, which is swimming the, the distance uh, from one side to the other. And the uh, prone float, uh, which is basically, imagine this, this line, the brick line is uh, the water. Uh, basically, you have to you know, go underwater, hold your breath for you know, however long you can, come back out, breathe, go back in, and then make sure that no one's around you. Make sure you know, you're looking around, you know, push off or swim away from those people, go back out, breathe, go back in. So they, what the instructors are looking for is the fact that, you know, you're not, you know, outside and not panicking. So you don't want to be panicking because if you're panicking, they'll see it and they'll take you out and you'll take, you know, prone float again and again, you know, a couple times. And uh, <clears throat> so they want to see a minimum, minimum amount of time spending outside of water and a lot of time spending uh, your head in water. So that's that's the prone float, and you spend that, you do that for five minutes. 
All right, so the third thing, it comes from future sailor Kennedy and Tafoya on the tests. So there's three academic tests besides the depth test uh, throughout boot camp, which isn't too hard. Um, and uh, if you don't pass the test uh, in your second try, so let's say you failed once, and if you fail again twice, you do get set back in boot camp, and that has happened to one person uh, who was put in my division, but that's extremely rare. No one really fails the test uh, unless you just don't really care and you don't pay attention. And they do give you a lot of time to study for your tests. They give you a lot of materials. And when I say material, make sure when, you know, I can't really say what it is, but make sure when you get to boot camp, and they give you that time to study and they will give you the material to study and not your training guide, not your training guide, not your uh, Blue Jackets manual, which is the second book in regards to history of, of everything that we do in the boot camp rates and all that kind of stuff. So there's your training guide, Blue Jackets manual and the study material that they give you. Make sure you, uh, make sure you memorize the study material, which by the time you take the test, it will, it will be memorized because you, uh, they give you so much time to go over it and um, study for the test. Uh, but you know, some people have failed um, you know, the first time and you know, there was that one guy who failed it twice and you know, got set back in boot camp so, and then, then joined my division. So, uh, you know, it, that's, that's only really due to them really not caring and it's really their fault uh, for them doing that. So it's, it's really, if you want, let's say, excellent, like if you want the top grades, uh, you know, I would say you have to have, and you want an award. If you want, if you want the academic award, you obviously have to get perfect score on your ASVAB, which is 99, and also uh, ace all the tests. Uh, which is basically get 100% on all three tests. And just to give you an idea of, you know, the top, the top person with the top grade in my division, uh, he always studied for these, these stuff. He, he, was, he studied, you know, day and night. Like sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll see him at, at night at TAPS. He'll be sleeping and then he'll have his book. Like he was like this and he's sleeping and I'll say, Yo, man, wake up, put your book away. And he'll just wake up and he'll just go back reading. And he just does that, you know, he sleeps like six hours each day and he spends two hours studying. So that's type of the mentality that you should have if you want, you know, high academics and if you want that award. So number four, uh, Mr. Janiel four on ASVAB. So ASVAB, uh, he was asking me about, uh, is it difficult and, uh, can you tell me about your personal experience? So, uh, personal experience for me, it wasn't too difficult. You know, I know a lot of people say it was difficult. So I have an average grade. I think I got about, if I can remember correctly, I mean, I took it uh, a year ago now because I joined November 4th. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I got right about 70, which is, which, is a, which is a decent average score and, um, you know, I, I, it's basically what reminded me what ASVAB was to me was like SAT. So if you've ever taken the SAT score, SAT test, it's not as hard as the SAT. Um, but there are a lot of practice ASVAB tests online, which does kind of cover a good amount of it, but not in detail and not in, you know, not everything that the ASVAB uh, asks for. Uh, but what I did was, you know, I bought a... Uh, book from Barnes and Noble not you don't you don't need a fancy $30 textbook that's like you know 500 pages you just need like a good small one uh, that you can study for like a week two weeks and uh, before you take the ASVAB and you know that's going to really help and with the ASVAB let's say you take it taken it once you didn't get the score that you want uh, for your rate you can also take it again 30 days later and that's the only time. So you take it once and a month, exactly a month later, you can take it again. Um, so make sure you tell your recruiter if you don't get the score that you want. And also within that time, study for it because you've taken it once. It's not going to be the same test. They're going to switch it up. 
uh, it's not going, uh, so, it, but you have a good idea of what it is. Uh, so remember it and study the material that they look for and then, you know, take it again. So, you know, talk, communicate with your recruiter in that, in that way. So, number five. Did you still tie ask a typical boot camp schedule? So I actually, uh, if you saw my yesterday's video in regards to my journal, so I actually kept a journal uh, which where I wrote almost every single day of what I did, sometimes what I did, my thoughts, feelings, emotions, and um, some of the things that I, emotional roller coasters and, and everything that I learned, what happened, like the fights. Uh, in boot camp, that happened and I wrote down in my journal uh, throughout boot camp. So if you guys want me to make a video where I just kind of like re read uh, what I wrote, uh, leave that in the comment section below. But a typical day would look like this. So you wake up, I mean, depending on the day's schedule, sometimes it's different, but for the most part, uh, you, you will always wake up at 0600. And uh, you get ready, brush your teeth, make your bed, uh, get in uniform by 0615. This is not going to be how it is for like the first couple of weeks because you're not going to have all your clothes and all your materials. Uh, but you know, when, when you're in like a month in and when you're really in boot camp, uh, you know, this is kind of the typical schedule. So you wake up at 6, get ready by 615. If you don't get ready by 615, um, you know, you, you're obviously going to do some push-ups sit-ups and all that kind of stuff and then you clean uh, until you eat breakfast or you know it, it changes the schedule always changes uh, you might go to class first thing in the excuse me first thing in the morning or you might actually go you know physical training first thing in the morning uh, but you will always get three uh, meals a day breakfast lunch and dinner uh, you will never uh, skip those times and always after you come back from a physical training uh, exercise you will take a shower with you know 80 other people and um, so a, a good portion of your day does always consist of uh, RDC training time which is your instructors training you uh, on, on certain stuff like you know they give you study time uh, they teach you how to fold clothes they teach you how to make beds or they talk about spending money saving money they talk about you know car insurance you know many different things they they the navy really does uh, want for their sailors their future recruits to be edu well educated and um, you know not make rational decisions on finances educational stuff like that so they there's they do teach you a lot of, they go over with you a lot of uh, a lot of these stuff like finances and uh, you know Montgomery GI Bill uh, tuition assistance and uh, you know thrift savings plan uh, which is like your retirement plan so they do go go over with you a lot of these stuff in classes so you learn that through boot camp and as far as like physical training uh, not a lot of you know maybe like an hour at best um, an hour and 15 minutes uh, of physical training time which isn't really too much uh, because you know you walk you you march to the training hall and then you march back which is you know like could be like 30 minutes 30 45 minutes and you actually train and physically work out for like you know 20 minutes maybe so not a lot of physical training time and um, you know they sometimes they purposely you know try to find fault and uh, punish everyone just just because they can which is also a form of physical training and number six comes from future sailor more I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong and this is uh, specifically on the run so the run and I'm gonna assume it's either the physical training run or the uh, uh, physical fitness assessment run so you do get the shuttle run which is basically like they, they designate I, I think if I remember correctly only three or four days where uh, you run all you do is run so uh, you know, at first it's going to be very little, like let's say 10 minutes of running nonstop, then 12 minutes running nonstop, 15 minutes running nonstop, 20 minutes running nonstop, and uh, this these days are like towards the later, at towards the end of boot camp, 
uh, coming building towards the final physical fitness assessment because if you fail the first two uh, physical fitness assessment uh, it's not as important uh, they, they look for that uh, and they have these shuttle runs towards the end because uh, they know by looking at the first two physical assessment tests uh, you know who's not a good good runner uh, who needs more help and these shuttle runs are designed for those people and the RDCs and the instructors are going to specifically look and make sure uh, these people who are not performing well on their run uh, you know push through and so uh, you know one of the tips that I can give you is and one of the things that I did for for my fellow my fellow shipmates is uh, you know I had you know, at the last physical fitness assessment, you know, I had two people that weren't the best runners. Uh, they they failed the first two, and uh, they were really worried. So you know, they came up to me and said, you know, can you help me? Uh, you know, how do you run? So like, a lot of people ask like, how do you run? Like, how how do you do things? But to be honest with you, it's not. It's all mental. Running is all mental. And you know what I said to them was, hey, you know, follow me. Just follow me. And then this was on the shuttle run. And then I said, just keep up with me. I keep a good pace. I run the lap in 12 minutes. I run a minute a lap. So I, I needed to make my time in 1330. And I made it in 12 minutes because I run a minute a lap 12, on the track field. Uh, and then if you run the track field 12 times, that's 1.5 miles, which is basically passing. And so I said, hey, follow me. I run a good lap. I don't, you know, run fast. I don't do this, you know. I'll, and I'll show you, you know, which, what I do, what I think about, and uh, you know, they they passed on their final PFA, a uh, P yeah physical fitness assessment uh, because you know they just kept up with me. So my advice to you, if you're not the best runner, is to find someone uh, that is a good runner, and uh, you know just ask them, hey. You know, can I can I run with you on the shuttle runs and on the physical fitness assessment runs? Uh, so if you know they will obviously pass or they pass and they're they're good runners, uh, you know, you make sure you keep up with them. Now you don't want like let's say you're the slowest runner in your whole division, you don't want to be paired up with the fastest runner. Like if they run like the 1.5 miles in like eight minutes and you run 1.5 miles in like you know 20 minutes. Obviously, that's not going to work, right? So you want to find someone that's an average. So I'm an average runner. I hate running. I, <laughs> I hate running. Uh, but you know, I'm not like a fast runner. I'm not a slow runner. I'm an average runner. So you know, that's an ideal uh, way that you should start training. So uh, because you, at the same time, you have a motivator with you. So one of the things that you know, if you're going to boot camp and you're worried about running. If you saw my previous video when I was talking about Navy boot camp, you know, 2015, you know, when you're the first week you're there in boot camp, you send a letter out home saying, "Hey mom and dad, this is when I graduate." And they're going to get their plane tickets ready, hotel if they're going to come to your graduation. And if you don't pass your run, right? Let's say you can do your push-ups fine, your sit-ups fine, but you can't do your run. If you can't do your run, you know, really, the motivator is, hey, my parents are coming to my graduation. If I don't pass my run, I get set back, and my parents can't make it to graduation because they're not at the last week, at the last week or two, they're not going to be able to reroute, reset their vacation, reset their vacation day, or reset their um, day off to come to you know Chicago to. Great Lakes to see you graduate because it's going to be on a very very short notice like you're going to take your physical fitness assessment and they're going to give you a lot of attempts uh, until you pass and then if you don't pass it's going to be like week before graduation where you get to call your parents and say like hey mom and dad I can't I'm not graduating on the day I know you already bought the plane ticket you've uh, uh, set your vacation day towards Chicago or taking the day off to fly out here but you know that's not going to happen. You know that that's not what you want to happen. So uh, if you're not the best runner, make sure you you know find a way to motivate yourself. You know emotionally, you have to find an emotional level that you can connect with that oh, that beats the physical mind.
So emotion over mind. And one of the best saying I've heard was uh, mind over matter, right? You hear that all the time. If you, but the thing is, if you don't mind the pain, it doesn't matter, right? If you don't mind, you know, my best thing is uh, when, when I had the two people running with me and I said, hey, just, just put out for 12 minutes. Put out for 12 minutes. Give it all for 12 minutes. And that's it. You will see your parents. Right? For 12 minutes, just a little bit of your day focused on pain and exercise. Embrace it just so you can have a huge reward at the end. You're not going to be as mode. You're not going to be set back in training. So anyway, moving on, moving on. So number seven, Jeff B. asks about the swim. So, uh, you know, you know what, can you, what, what are the different types of swimming tests? So there's many different miscellaneous little swim tests not that important i'm not going to actually say what those miscellaneous things are no one really fails them no one fails them that i've heard of and um you know i don't i can't i don't think i can say exactly everything uh but the main things that i can talk about is basically the jump you know you jump i think it's like 15 feet off a little top and then you jump into the water and then from there you swim i think it's like i think it's like they say it's like an Olympic-sized pool, so if you're swimmers, you would know what that is. I feel like it's, it's like 250 to 300 yards, so that's like, you know, two basketball courts. And so... Sorry about that. Someone came in and I lose my train of thought all the time. And so, uh, swim. So basically, uh, you jump off, and then you swim, like two basketball courts, and then, you know, you get up, and then uh, you do, like, little miscellaneous tests of, like, just in case, let's say, you were wearing your uniform and you fell off from the boat uh, or the ship, and then you, 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 you use your uniform to uh, float. So that's one, and also... The other one, which is the prone flow, which is the more important and the next biggest obstacle for those who uh, don't really know how to swim. Uh, and then that's it, I think. Yeah, that's, that's really it. The main three is the jump, swim, and the prone flow. That's, that's the most difficult for those people who don't really know how to swim. So that's the, uh, that's the seven questions. So... Um, I, I know, I, I think that covers every single question for the most part. If I didn't answer your question here, I probably left a comment on your, on your question. So, uh, you know, I hope this video helped you guys. If you guys have any more questions, if I didn't, let's say, clarify something enough, if I wasn't clear enough on what I said, leave that in the comment section below, guys. So I hope you have a great Navy day.